welcome current live and future YouTube viewers to this episode of Drama Mama Investigates. On this show, for those of you who are unfamiliar, we always attempt to get to the bottom of drama. And the way that we do it is we watch all the materials that we can find with regard to a specific drama that you might be out of the loop on, and we try to get you caught up onto the loop. And what we try to do is we try to weigh all of the different sides of the drama and come to the actual truth to the best of our ability. Now, my goal in producing these is to have the most unbiased coverage as possible, but it is drama. It's impossible to remove all bias, so keep that in mind. But at the end, I give my conclusions after we've let everyone review all of the, the, the footage that's possible, okay? Now, sometimes, like today, we have a drama that has multiple parts or that's been unfolding for a while. So, if you have not been keeping up with the uh, Jimmy Dore versus the Young Turks and then the Jimmy Dore versus Kyle Kalinske drama, um, you might still be a little bit out of the loop. However, I'm going to give you a very quick roundup of our conclusions. I highly encourage you to go watch the previous videos, which will be posted over the next couple days. We are going to have them all come out in order that, so that you can follow each of the little drama mamas and be totally up on the loop. Okay? Um, that's how we like to do it here. So let me give you the quick summary. Part one of this was Jimmy Dore versus the Young Turks. What basically happened is uh, Jimmy Dore, a very popular lefty content creator on the internet, self-reported about his, um, and totally unapologetically, mind you, self-reported about his harassment, sexual harassment, of a very, very well-respected and well-known um, Young Turks reporter, and one of the founding members, if I remember correctly, Anna Kasparian. Jimmy Dore's statements were disgusting. His behavior was, our conclusion with that was that there is no possible way that any person can come away from this honestly supporting Jimmy Dore without admitting that they are a sexist or they're okay with sexual harassment. Jimmy Dore openly admitted to it. There was no provocation on, on uh, no public provocation of any type on Anna Kasparian's part. And he openly admitted and confessed to what, she, what he did to her and also mind you did not apologize for those actions in fact he said he would he should have done worse that's pretty bad so that was part one part two uh was between jimmy Dore and kyle kalinsky the host of a t of a lefty radio show called secular talk um kyle kalinsky um was uninvolved in the drama until jimmy Dore tagged him in and essentially asked him to make a statement against the Young Turks. Kyle Kalinske um, b basically said he didn't want to be involved in the drama, and then he did a video on the drama because he felt like he had no choice because he was being, you know, he was being bullied by Jimmy Dore was the conclusion that we pulled away from. Unfortunately, in my opinion, Kyle Kalinske um, unintentionally sort of came out on the side of Jimmy Dore even though he didn't explicitly say that, the way that he talked about it, he basically denounced Anna Kasparian and then very, very softly sort of denounced some of the things that Jimmy Dore did while also downplaying the sexual harassment, which is obvious and confessed to by Jimmy Dore. And this leads us to today, which is that Jimmy Dore has basically responded very, very harshly to... Kyle's even milk toast condemnation. And we're going to watch Kyle Kalinske's newest response video. And I think this is important because these sorts of things demonstrate how communities uh, engage with one another online. And you can start to get an idea of what type of community you're dealing with by observing the conflicts that they get in and how they act. Now, I had some crit criticisms. Um, uh, I had some criticisms of the way that Kyle Kalinske handled the drama. 
the reason why I had such um, strong criticisms is because in 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 the effort of sort of di distancing himself from the drama, he seriously downplayed what happened to Anna Kasparian. And he also sort of brushed over the fact that Jimmy brought all of this on himself. Anna did not go public with any of this. Anna simply had a private conflict with Jimmy Dore and Jimmy Dore decided to make it public to get his community involved, which was what Anna Kasparian originally took umbrage with with Jimmy Dore. Anna Kasparian messaged Jimmy Dore and said, hey, your fans are constantly going after me because you constantly talk about me. I don't talk about you. I don't want anything to do with you. Please stop talking about me. Please stop sending your toxic fans to say horrible shit about me on all my videos, which you've been doing. And then Jimmy Dore decided to take it public and do exactly what Anna Kasparian said that he'd been doing this whole time. So... Let's watch Kyle Kalinske's newest video on this, shall we? This is going to be the sort of bread and butter of this uh, of this section because um, it's it is a very interesting follow up, and we're going to see a lot of very interesting information in this. I have had a little bit of a preview of this video. I have not seen the entire thing, so I will be reacting mostly fresh. But I know a little bit of what's in here, and we also have to cover something else because. Jimmy Dore has been making appearances on other people's shows that are not Kyle Kalinske. And oh my goodness, are they messy. Oh my God, are they messy. So let's take a look at Kyle Kalinske's video without any further ado, and let's react. Watched Aaron Mate and uh, Jimmy Dore respond to my segment on their beef with TYT, and uh, I have a lot to say about it. Now, again, let me say up front, there's nothing I want to do less than this segment. Okay. I don't want to do this segment at all. But now I feel like I'm in a position where I have to respond. So as noted, as noted in the previous video, Kyle spends a lot of time talking about how he really doesn't want to get involved. And I understand. I get it. We talked about this. We weighed this. I understand not wanting to get involved in personal drama but this is not just personal drama jimmy Dore admitted to harassing sexually harassing and also unapologetically doing so one of kyle's supposed friends kyle has claimed on numerous occasions that anna kasparian is his friend etc etc and yet he's acting i don't want to get involved i don't want to get involved i'm sorry but i find um, I find it to be rather concerning that if your friend openly admits and unapologetically boasts about sexually harassing your other friend, that you wouldn't at least take a firm stand against that. It doesn't mean you have to completely distance yourself. Like, for example, sometimes your friends do something shitty and you have to go, dude, that was fucked. That was really fucked. So... Yeah, I, I, we talked about this in the last video. We're probably going to talk about it again. Let's continue. Where there are areas where I think I'm wrong, I'm going to admit it, and I'm going to own up to it, and I'm going to correct the record, and I'm going to apologize. And Dude. there are some of those areas. There's two areas where I think I'm wrong, and I think Jimmy is owed an apology. There's also a number of areas where I think they're wrong or completely misinterpreting something that happened so let's dive into all of it we're going to break it all down keep in mind he has not kyle kalinsky has not felt the need to apologize to anna kasparian who is supposedly also his friend that is to me i i i i, I can't help but feel that's a little bit weird doesn't that feel and maybe i'm wrong here but doesn't that feel a little bit sexist like the idea that like uh, Jimmy, the person, Jimmy was the one who got Kyle involved. And yet, Kyle is apologizing to Jimmy, but hasn't made any apologies or any, any real motions towards supporting Anna. Hopefully this is the last thing I have to say about it, but we'll see. For all we know, we could be responding video to video from now until the end of time. Um, so let's go ahead and start. Take a look at this first clip. And to be honest... Kyle said a lot of things in there that I was appreciative of him saying. 
So that was very nice. He, he said things like, of course, Jimmy's not a right winger. Jimmy's not a grifter. Jimmy is a guy who's on the left and, and it criticizes the Democrats from the left. So, so that was super helpful that he said all that. And I also, you know, I, I think yesterday I said it too on the show that I was super grateful to Kyle for his support of Force to Vote. He was the most eloquent defender of Force to Vote. And, uh, and I was really happy about that. I was really grateful. All right, so a uh, couple things here. First of all, thank you, Jimmy. Um, Buttering him up. My response is the same thing I said previously. I think you're a totally honest actor. I know you believe every single word you say. I know you're super passionate. Um, I wouldn't doubt your integrity for a second. I think that the criticisms are absurd when people say you're a right-winger or you're a grifter or whatever. Um, so, I just want to establish here, number one, a mutual respect, number two, a friendship, but number three, and this is probably most important, he's showing here, okay, Kyle is a good faith actor. Kyle's a good faith actor, he's an honest person, what he's saying comes from a good place. He's not malicious, he's not a liar, he's not a smear merchant, you know, he's keeping it real. Okay, so we've established that. Wonderful. I do want you to take note, though. When it's stuff that I agree with them, that's their perception of me. You'll see when there's areas where we disagree or where they think we disagree or they don't like something I said or did, all of a sudden that assumption of good faith or that charitable interpretation, it goes out the window. So, let's continue. Obviously, I'm going to talk here about Hmm. the drama between... Jimmy Dore and Aaron Maté versus the Young Turks. So I just want to reiterate, I don't want to do this segment. I don't want to talk about it. I've bent over backwards to stay out of this fight. Now, some of you might not like that. I don't care. I don't care. I'll never hide a single thing from any of you when it comes to policy. But when it comes to personal shit, I don't want to get involved in it. And I want to stay out of it. Well, see, Gloob, we're not really reacting right now. We're analyzing. I mean, I guess that's kind of a reaction. It's a reaction to a reaction to a reaction. Well, I mean, it's literally that Bo Burnham bit. It really isn't. Like, you know, people joke about reactception, but this is a commentary on a conversation. It is a little bit. There's a little bit of that. But, but come on. Okay, now... I'll just briefly comment on that, like, the, and we'll talk about it more as we go on, but it was incorrect of him to state it as drama. All right, so let me be clear. It's not just drama. It's a lot more than just drama. A big part of it is about Syria. A big part of it is about force the vote. A big part of it is about Russiagate, all of these substantive issues. Now, on the policy stuff, though, nobody has to guess where I'm at. Everybody knows exactly where I'm at. I'm on the record a thousand times over. But that stuff is important. That stuff is substantive. I will never shy away from that stuff. The reason I call it drama is because of the other stuff. Now we're talking about, rightly or wrongly, rightly or wrongly, we're talking about hashtag me too stuff. We're talking about blackmail. We're talking about... Hey, he upgraded. Last time he called it hashtag me too bullshit, which I think was super fucking dismissive. I I think calling Anna Kasparian getting double humiliated un like a, like publicly by Jimmy Dore hashtag me too bullshit is super disrespectful. I actually think that's super bad. That was one of my biggest criticisms of Kyle. People being liars and smear merchants and grifters and right wingers and corrupt and every negative thing you can think of. When it gets that personal and people are going after integrity and motivations Yes, I'm a lot more hesitant to step in there, because in order for me to comment on that stuff, man, there's so much stuff to unpack. It's hard to unpack everything. It's hard to get back to the root. It's hard to comment on every nook and cranny. So the easier thing is, hey, let me just stay out. I'll stick to the policy stuff, and you guys can handle all that other stuff. Okay, continue. I don't agree with Anna on that. She said that. It was fucked up. But as soon as I read that tweet, I said, "Uh uh-oh, here we go. This shit is about to get nuclear, because Jimmy Dore has one gear, and that gear is nuclear. Hey, thank you. Thank you for whoever okay. just joined. And, thank you. Uh, well, Appreciate let me just that. Show this. So he, he makes it 
I, I, don't, I don't get it. makes it sound like that's a negative. First of all, he shows a bunch of videos where I'm completely level headed and arguing uh, in, in good faith for the Young Turks, but uh, which kind of undermines what he just said that I only have one speed. But here, it, I, I don't mind people saying that. That's actually, I take it as a compliment because people on, we need people on the left who are going to go nuclear because they won't even go conventional. Uh, they won't even do anything. Mm -hmm. So uh, they're doing nothing. So people want someone to go nuclear, but here... I mean, what are they supposed to be doing this about, Jimmy? You did this. You created all of this. None of this was necessary. You did all of it. We have... we Again, we went over this. We analyzed with the tweets, with the receipts in the first video. We went right over that shit. You did this, Jimmy. So I don't know what the hell he's talking about. But I always thought that was a good thing. I thought Kyle agreed with that because when he was on Joe Rogan, this is what they said. Shit. You know what's been amazing? Jimmy Dore. Jimmy Dore's yeah. fucking podcaster. He is... He's a good friend of mine. I, like Jimmy. I love Jimmy Dore. He's calling everybody out. Everybody on the left, that everybody on the right. breathes fire. He really does. <laughs> he breathes fire. He doesn't Jimmy give does. a fuck. He yeah. goes hard. He was doing this... Hmm. Okay, so hmm. again... Of course he loves Jimmy. This is probably the first example of him... Uh, misinterpreting intent on my part. When I said Jimmy Dore has one gear and it's nuclear, I'm not saying that in that instance with a negative or a positive connotation. I'm saying it just as an objective descriptor. Now, ultimately, in my opinion, he's right. When it comes to politics, nuclear. Go nuclear all day long. We need politicians and we need media figures who are willing to go nuclear because, like he says, nobody's willing to go nuclear, and he's right about that. So when it comes to politics and the national debate, nuclear all day long, I love it, and that's what Jimmy does. However, when it comes to private matters, personal Hello, matters, regular dude, and welcome. dealing with friends and family, nuclear is not as preferable, and you shouldn't go to it nearly as much. It's, a, it's not true, to be fair and to be clear. He has shown restraint at various times, but, yes, one of the criticisms is, Thank and I all. think you'll see this throughout the course of the video here, um... He misinterprets a number of things, and then he does end up going nuclear, perhaps inadvertently, but he ends up going nuclear on me when we've already established that, hold on, I'm a good faith actor, and I mean well, and my criticisms are coming from a place of good faith, but then you end up going nuclear on me, so, yes, the nuclear nature that's good at the political level might not be as beneficial at the friendship level or at the personal level. Continue. Crystal and I were planning to have... Jimmy on Crystal Kyle and Friends one day. We were planning to have Jank on Crystal Kyle and Friends one day. And then as we watched this, we decided, you know what? We don't want to have either one of them on right now. Because then we would be responsible for getting in the middle of this absolute mess. And we would have to ask really uncomfortable questions that are really personal in nature. And I don't want to have anything to do with some personal shit. That's not true. Nothing at all. I care about policy. I don't care about personal shit. When I said there, listen, if he comes on Crystal Kyle and Friends, I'm obligated. I have a responsibility to ask questions about this. Now, I'm going to ask questions not that I think are unfair, not that I think feed into the smear or validate the smear. I would ask a question like, hey... When they threatened you, when Anna threatened you, when she effectively blackmailed you, and you were swatting aside the allegation. Dragon Slayer says, Kyle is legit afraid of Jimmy. That's the impression I've gotten so far. So far of this video and the last video, I've gotten the impression that Kyle is afraid of Jimmy Dore and Jimmy Dore's audience. Which, to me, that indicates that if you're, if you feel you have to tiptoe on glass on eggshells around somebody, that's a pretty good indication that that person is a very toxic person to be around. I mean, it is always possible. Some people tiptoe on eggshells around everyone. Obviously, that happens. But Kyle is a Kyle is a broadcaster, and he's tiptoeing around Jimmy Dore, and he's not doing that for other people. To me, it sounds like Kyle Kulinski is unironically afraid of Jimmy Dore's audience. And I don't know if I blame Kyle Kulinski entirely for that. Could it be an indication of some level of cowardice? Yes, of course it could. But it could. It, but it's also an indication that there's a toxic community. Oh, uh, Yolo Hobbit asks, Sorry if this was already covered in the last drama, Mama, but what exactly was this blackmail from Anna? 
I'll explain that real quick. Let me explain that for those who, who didn't catch the other videos. Again, I recommend going and watching them. They will be up on the channel by the time this video is published. Anna Kasparian uh, has been harassed by Jimmy Dore and his fans. He's Jimmy Dore brings up Anna Kasparian very quite frequently, to be completely honest. And Anna Kasparian sent a message to Jimmy Dore that went something along, like paraphrased like this. Jimmy... You keep sending your fans after me. You keep bringing me up on your show. I don't want anything to do with you. I, You might not like my politics, but I don't care. Please stop talking about me. Please stop fucking sending your fans over at me. And, and uh, because I'm tired of the of the abuse. And and just just so you know, I remember what you did to me all those years ago. That's what she said. She said, I remember the sexual harassment you did to me. And that's all she said. She just said she remembered it. That is not blackmail. And then Jimmy chose to leak those DMs. That was not a tweet. That was in a DM. That was in private. And Jimmy chose to leak those and then retell the story as if it was a victory for himself. He gleefully, openly admitted to doing the sexual harassment and also leaked the DMs live. It was an unfair situation. Fawn moment. But in retrospect, do you feel like you worded everything right? Or would you sort of change the way you did it because you did go a little too far, talk about she's dressing inappropriately and effectively slut shamed her? In retrospect, how do you feel about how you... Not effectively. He did. He just slut shamed her. That is... It is, it is textbook. That is literally what he did. He made fun of her for wearing an inappropriate dress and he... And it was revealed, by the way, after the fact that he humiliated her in front of her students. She was not even working that, not formally working on the news show that day. She was there teaching students and Jimmy made a sexist comment about her dress to in front of her students. Handled that. Now listen, this is an example of I think that's a perfectly valid and substantive question. I don't think that's a question that validates a smear. I think that's a question a lot of people want to know the answer to. A lot of fair-minded people want to know the answer to. Here's the problem. We're at an impasse. I think that's a perfectly fair question, and I would feel obligated. I would feel a responsibility to ask that question if he came on Crystal Kyle and Friends. And I know Jimmy does not agree. Jimmy thinks that's an unfair question. He thinks it's unfair, and he definitely thinks it validates the smear. And so now, what are we supposed to do? We're at an impasse. I feel an obligation, I feel a responsibility to ask a tough, but I think fair question. He thinks that's an unfair question. In my opinion, the best solution, and since Jimmy's my friend, this is what I, uh, I fell back on is, let's just not have him on. Let's just not have him We're on. We're gonna talk about that, question. Sad Sam, don't you worry. That's what I was thinking. Sad Sam says, did you see Jimmy saying he wants to punch Anna Kasparian? We're going to watch that together. Just so you know. Yeah, Vermin Hand says this is the cringe Olympics. It's going to get worse, Vermin. It's going to get even worse. I'm telling you, again, I had a small preview. I'm telling you, it's going to get worse. That's what I was thinking. Now, people could actually come after me from the opposite perspective on this and say, if anything, that's not fair and that's weak of Kyle because he's basically covering for his friend Jimmy. He was going to ask him a tough but fair question, but he'd rather dodge and punt Thank and not so have much. him on the show at all, so he really doesn't have to that. ask him that tough question. And to that I say, yeah. I'm kind of guilty of that criticism. Yes, True. I mean, that was one of the reasons. I didn't want to jeopardize my friendship with him by asking there him There we go, there you have it. There you have it. He thought was an there you have question. it. I didn't want to jeopardize my friendship with him. I also... Posadas John asks, who smeared Jimmy? No one smeared Jimmy. No one smeared Jimmy. Jimmy is mad that Anna smeared Aaron Mate, who is a friend of Jimmy. It is the most, this is the most, it is the most cringe high school tier shit from grown adults, from adult men, old men. This, I mean, Kyle is not old, but Jimmy is old. No one smeared Jimmy. Arguably, you could say that, that Jenk, not Anna, that Jenk, smeared Aaron Mate, but no one smeared Jimmy. Jimmy is the one who's, this is manufactured on Jimmy's part. We've, 
again, in the previous Drama Mamas, we proved that Jimmy was not telling the truth. Let's continue. Didn't want to have to argue about the legitimacy of a question that I think is very legitimate. You know what I mean? I didn't want yeah, to get into the personal argument and sussy. have a personal strife over that. Whoops, little sussy. Da -na 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 -na. Da -na -na. So, and, and understand something, guys. We had Vosh on the podcast, and he he'd previously accused me and Crystal being grifters and every negative thing under the sun. Mm. And so we had to talk about that. Was it a little awkward? Absolutely. No, I'm, I don't even know Vosh that well. Uh, we had Andrew Yang on the podcast. I don't know Andrew Yang at all. We had to press him on BDS, and when he basically was like, Israel killing civilians is totally fine, and killing children is fine. We had to push him on all these things. It was awkward, and I don't even know them that well. Jimmy, I know pretty well, and my question for him would be even more awkward and more personal, and I didn't want to do it. And I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to ask him about it. But I would have felt like a fraud if I didn't ask him a tough but fair question like that. So what are... The Pasa Posadist John says... Uh, Aaron Mate is an Assad POS and has taken money from RT. Yes, we verified that last time. Indeed, it is. It, it does seem to be true that Aaron Mate was indeed taking money from the Russian government at one point or another. So that is not entirely false. And uh, yes, Mate does make a lot of apologia for Assad. We're not getting into that. We've said we've kept that serious throughout the entire drama thing. We're not talking about the takes on Assad, even though those are part of this. But the fact of the matter is, once again, no one was smeared. Nothing false was said about any of them. Jenk accused Aaron Mate of taking money from the Russian government. It is true. Aaron Mate contributed to RT. RT is a channel that is owned by the Russian government. Now, is that perhaps misleading? Maybe. You could argue it's a little bit misleading, but I don't, but it is not untrue. There is no smear going on. Smearing is not when you say something that's true um, and you, and there's disagreement on the interpretation of that true thing. That is not what a smear is. I'm sorry, that's just not. What I do, I did what I thought was the better thing for me, because I don't want to deal with the personal strife, but also for him, because he would think it's an unfair question, and so I punted. I didn't want him on. So when he's talking there, shaking his head, saying that's not true, when what I'm saying is, is definitely true, my point is, if I have you on, I have to ask about this. I don't have a choice. I view it as my responsibility, my obligation. There, see, that's, that's the problem. We're now at an impasse, and we're never going to see eye to eye on that. And so... Even though I agree with Jimmy completely that effectively he was he was blackmailed, that he was threatened, and it's unfair, and he has every right to swat aside those allegations, and I'm happy he did, and he should do that. But the way he did it went a little overboard, and he was slut shaming Anna. I'm sorry, I think that's a fact. Even though Jimmy's my friend, and so I would have had to ask him a question on that. He's shaking his head like no. In other words, Jimmy wanted to come on the podcast and also just not have me ask anything about that, or if I did ask anything about that, frame it 100% from his perspective. Hmm. Well, you know, Jimmy, I got bad news for you, man. In this whole debate and argument, I'm probably 85 or 90% with you, and I'm only 10% or 15% with TYT, but I'm going to have to ask the questions for that 10 or 15% because that's me being intellectually honest, and I can't not be intellectually honest. Okay, let's continue. Well, if you care about policy, then why not, and you recognize that the smear of me was ridiculous, why not just call that out to begin with? Because, look, my, my problem here is that when people stay silent Again, on... it wasn't a smear. Nothing dishonest. Uh, okay, let's define a smear. When people say a smear, usually what they mean by a smear is that false information is spread all over the place about you to make you look bad. It's called a character assassination. That is another term for what a smear is. A smear is a character assassination. It's when somebody e spreads something that's either deeply out of context or totally false in the hopes of ruining your reputation. That is not what happened. That is just not what happened. So, something so egregious as slander, you know. It's uh, not slander. It's definitely of... not slander. It is, you are publicly, pu you have publicly in your name, you have public, it's on your profiles, online, Aaron Mate, that you have contributed to RT, 
And I agree. I will grant this, okay? I will grant that indeed, I, I do think that you could make the argument that Jenk was being careless, but Jenk said one line. That is not a smear. Saying one thing that you could say is slightly out of context is not a smear. That's just not. This is so ridiculous. And it's, it's frustrating because engaging with this requires restating facts over and over and over again. Verified facts that we have in our videos. Pass an endorsement to it, even if you think it's obvious what everyone's going to think your opinion is. If people, prominent people on the left, say nothing when someone gets accused of working for Russia or for dictators, I see that as a tacit green light. Here's why I totally disagree with that. He says, if I don't speak up on it, it's a tacit endorsement of the smears. I was smeared by Via Latte. Didn't Anna also say he was paid by them? Um, no. To my knowledge, Anna did not. Now, Anna may have in the in the after the pre the previous episode was recorded, it's possible that Anna said that on Twitter, but on the show that they talked about, it was Jenk, not Anna. You could say, you could say that Anna didn't push back, which that would be true, but that is not what they're saying. You notice that they're fudging a lot of details here in the name of making, uh, like Jimmy and his, and his crew are fudging a lot of details in order to make their narrative sound better. But it's important that we get the details. That's why we do Drama Mama, to get the details, to actually find out if what these people are saying is true. It's really important. Something that people don't do on the internet, and in fact, you know what, I'm going to talk about this a little bit. Something that people do on the internet a lot is they fudge small details in the name of generating outrage. Those small details start to add up, and those can create a smear. Those can create a cancellation, and once those cancellations are sort of published into the into the public mind it can be very hard to get rid of them this is why we talk about disinfo online and this is why i do drama mama the way i do drama mama i do drama mama because i am i think that we're dementing ourselves with misinformation online so i like to get to the bottom of things i like to be clear about how we go about it and that's why we do it like this because i really think these details are important as we're seeing right now the, the fact that we're going through this right now is demonstrating that what we do here is actually that drama mama, the com concept of drama mama is valid and sound because there's so much little details that get changed in order to create a narrative about this thing that is favorable to Jimmy. And it's not just Jimmy. This happens in other cases, but relevant to this. Mike Cernovich, when he dug up all my old tweets and wrote an article call me, calling me a sexist and a racist and a bigot. And everything. Anna did say that they were being paid. Okay, Bruce Wayne incapacitated. Can you please provide me that? I will correct this right now if it is true that Anna did say that. But I have not seen Anna say that. We reviewed the clip. In the original, I I took Jimmy at his word on that. And then we rewatched the clip. If you can get me a clip of Anna saying that, then I will correct the record right now negative thing under the sun. Not a single lefty defended me. Not a single one. I'm not mad about that. It's not their responsibility. I'm not entitled to their defense. And you know what? I don't look at that and say Aaron Mate agrees with Mike Cernovich's smears of me because he didn't say anything. That's a tacit endorsement. That's tacit agreement with what Mike Cernovich said. I simply don't agree with that. Yeah, it's not that's, your fight. It's not your battle. What, Everybody's what, getting smeared on a daily basis. Okay? What 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 Kyle is talking about here is with us, with me or against me mentality. This um, you'll notice that like a lot of very abusive, like serially abusive people will use this type of rhetoric. You're either with me or against me. You cannot disagree with. You, you're not allowed to not comment. If you do not explicitly support me, you are an enemy. This is something that Jimmy Dore has done this entire time. In fact, this is why Kyle is even commenting on it at all. Because Jimmy Dore implied that Kyle was doing apologia for Anna by not commenting on it. By staying neutral. Keep up with all this stuff anyway. In the case of Crystal, Nathan J. Robinson wrote an article basically saying, Crystal works with populist right and Sagar and Jetty, who's populist right, uh, the most successful people on the populist right were the Nazis. Therefore, Crystal is emboldening or enabling Nazism. The article was insane. She was deeply hurt by that article. 
Not a single... Well, actually, Glenn Greenwald defended her, <laughs> because he, that's his beat. He cared a lot about that. But very few people defended her. I did, and Glenn did, and that's pretty much it. Now, if Aaron didn't say anything on that, or, you know, other lefties didn't say anything on that, Crystal doesn't hold it against them, because she doesn't view just not jumping in the middle of it as a tacit endorsement of it, or tacit agreement of it. So, on this front, Aaron, we're just going to fundamentally disagree. And, by the way, I think maybe the most important point is you win, dude, because I actually agree with you completely, and so when I felt like my hand was forced and I had to jump in the debate, what did I say? Go watch my last video. I said dude. you were totally smeared. No. It's completely fucked up. Total but he wasn't totally smeared. That's the problem, Kyle. The problem is that he wasn't totally smeared. We know this. ...denounce it. Should have never happened. The smear was so stupid, I was literally laughing as I listened you to it. You don't got to apologize for that, Falgaia. You're, you're all good. I'm glad you I were do. liking it. I think you're a wonderful journalist. And, you know, I've cited the OPCW report a thousand times. So, you know, that's just a fundamental disagreement. And I want to point something out again here. Early on in the clip, it was very, uh, you know, he operates in good faith. He's an honest actor. And then now here we are again where, since I didn't say anything, I didn't jump in immediately... Well, that's actually a tacit endorsement of the smear merchants. That's a stretch, man. Well, what happened was... What is the... O uh, Gloob asks, what is the OCPW report? The O... Or the OPCW report. The OPCW report is a report that was done that showed... Uh, allegedly showed flaws in the U.S. narrative about Assad. It's a long, long political chapter. We're not getting into that political side of it. Right now, we're, fixate, we're sort of fixating on the drama. And I recognize there are important conversations to be had around that, but that is a huge discussion. And it is, it is in the framework of this drama, it is a side note. Obviously, it's a very important conversation, but again. They booked me like a month earlier, right? So I, like on June 1st, I was texting with Crystal, and I said, uh, looking for, she asked me to tweet out their new show. She was like, hey, could you help promote our new show? And I said, done, I did it. I helped promote their new show. And she says, I said, looking forward to Kyle KKF. Kyle has not floated any dates to me yet. And she said, all right, I'll bug him and thank you. You've always been so good Again, to us. Again, showing DMs, don't know why. Grateful. And so you heard Kyle also refer to me on the Joe Rogan uh, clip as his good friend. So the way they treated me after this was not like a, you would treat a friend or even an enemy. The way they treated me was unbelievably rude and unprofessional to the extreme. So this is where it gets upsetting because Jimmy is about to get into, he views a lot of the things that he's about to explain, he views a lot of them as like really terrible slights and like Crystal and I taking pot shots and being super rude, bordering on evil. Thing. Again, and all I can with say with me or against me mentality. Along here is, he's reading too much into it. He's misinterpreting it. None of this had any malice or malintent whatsoever. We weren't slighting him even a little bit. And you know, this is what I mean when I say he's got that nuclear gear and he's going nuclear. I mean, listen, he's showing private texts here. I'm, I'm not going to make a big deal of it. He's going to show one of mine in a Dude, second Dude, you're not making well. a big deal but about... I do think if you're not making a big deal about him showing the private... Like, trying to get you involved further by showing the private texts of your co-host? Of, of showing your private texts? Like, I'm sorry, but look, with all, with all due respect, that is a little bit cucked. Dude, this guy is, is dumping your private conversations on his show to thousands of people, and you're not going to get bothered by that at all? even after you explicitly stated that you don't want him to like do that that you don't want to be involved dude that's your being your be you're becoming the victim of exactly what everyone else is talking about right now roles were reversed and i was showing his texts to me and without his approval i do think he would view that as like inexcusable on its own listen again i think jimmy means well i think he's an honest guy i think he's a very passionate guy but I do think this is an area where he's just going to misinterpret and view a lot of things as slights that are not at all slights. Continue. So you see that I have a date book. So she gives me the date. I pick June 24th. So when June 44th comes around, I'm ready to go do this show. 
And uh, I realize I haven't been, they haven't given me a link. They haven't nothing. There's no text reminding me, no nothing. So at, at was supposed to go at 10 a.m. And I, at 5 to 10, I texted them both saying, hey, I have this on my calendar today. Is it, are we still doing it? And they ghosted me. So they decided not to have me on the show, and they didn't tell me. They didn't send me an email the day ahead of time or even the day or whatever. Not the, and they didn't respond to my text when I sent it to them. They just ghosted me. Mm. And then about two and a half hours later. Now, I will say that's kind of shitty. That's kind of shitty to do. That's pretty shitty to do. That, that's, that, that is unprofessional, in my opinion. Uh, in the afternoon, so I was supposed to do it at 10 a.m. Oh, shit. In fact, it's really funny. Moment of truth. I think I accidentally did this by accident recently. It happens sometimes. I owe uh, I owe Just Allen a DM. I won't forget it. Don't worry. I, I, uh, I'm I not... I, I don't run a show of this tier yet. I don't have, a, I don't have people organizing or, or scheduling things for me, so I apologize. But that's me. See? There you go. I can own up to it. They sent me a text. I go. And I ghosted someone text. by accident. Okay. My bad. And the reason why I bring this up is because Kyle brought it up. So now that's why I'm bringing this up. So I'm going to tell you. So uh, I, here's my text. Are we doing a show today? Oh, we got a time here. Okay, hold on a second. Uh, Bruce Wayne incapacitated says, Jank Jank Uyghur's lies and smears obliterated by Aaron Mate on Rising. Jimmy's video, 2.30. Two Anna implies Mate and Jimmy are working for dictators. They also said they were being paid off by dictators because they received donations from anti-war gro uh, war groups. Uyghur? Uyghur? Sorry if I say that wrong. Uyghur. Um, uh, I always say Uyghur because of the... the it's similar. But anyway. Um, okay. Can I, Wait here. Let's take a look at this. Let's look into this. Three, two, two thirty. Let's see. And I will correct the record on this if this is untrue. Let's see. Here we go. Here's the video. We're going to take a quick side note. We're going to go to two minutes and 30 seconds. This is where I've been told there's Intentional a... Intentional... Now, keep in mind, this is from the 24th. So, I don't know when this would have fallen with regard to our coverage, but let's take a look. This information they put out there in regard to disgusting dictators around the world. The very people they <laughs> seem to be working for, to be quite honest with you. They seem to be working for, to be quite honest with you. Um, I'm sorry. I don't think that that, I don't think that that entirely qualifies. I'm sorry. That is, that is personal musing. I don't think that qualifies. Uh, uh saying, mm, they, they kind of seem like they're working for them. That's a, that's like a shitty jab, but I don't think that that's a claim. Yeah, uh, I, I, I feel you on this and I understand where this could be interpreted that way. But, yeah, that's not the same thing. That's not the same thing at all. And that isn't a smear. This isn't a members-only video after the show. I, I I don't think so. She's, yeah, she's hedging herself. I, I don't, I don't agree. But fair. I mean, a fair that we play it. But that's what he's referring to. Just so we know. Let's move on. All right, we're done. Disgusting. Uh, Absolutely disgusting. disgusting. But, uh, if er okay, that's her opinion. Mike. You are being biased. They also said they were paid off by the anti-war groups. I don't think I'm being biased there. I really do not think I'm being biased in this coverage. We've covered this three times, and I don't think that anything that Anna has said even compares to what they say that it is. I can say that that is, I will say, that's fine. We can agree to disagree. I, I don't interpret that. I think that that is pretty fairly a personal statement, but... No need to get no need to get super 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 contentious about it. I just don't agree with that characterization, and I especially don't agree in the context of the larger of the larger conflict. In the context of the larger conflict, that is a nothing statement in comparison to the shit that Jimmy Dore has been saying about them. Calendar says we are, and Kyle says, "Hey Jimmy." So again, that was again at two and a half two hours later, two and a half hours later. After they ghosted me, he says, hey, Jimmy, we are trying to stay as far away from the war between you and Aaron and TYT as possible. On the policy, we agree much more with you. Russia, Syria, forced to vote, etc. We're disturbed by Anna's attacks on Aaron, but we also didn't like the way you talked about Anna's dress. Huh? What? The F and F? Are you kidding me? That's my good friend? 
dude, that yeah. is so manipulative. Yeah. So own it, own it, again, Kyle. Again, I would have had to ask you about that, man. I didn't want to ask you about that, and I would have asked you again in what I view as a completely fair way. Yes, I think that they threatened you, and that's totally unfair and is totally unjust. You have every right to swat aside um, those allegations, and I'm glad you did. But when you did, you did go overboard, and you did slut shamer. So I think it would have been a fair question to say, hey, do you think you went a little too far in the language that you used afterwards? I know you don't think it's fair. I think that's a fair question. And so I would have had to ask that question. And so in my opinion, the best thing I could possibly do was get as far away from the situation as possible and not have any of you guys on the show. Now, instead of trying for a second to see maybe why I would take this position, he, he's viewing it as a phenomenal slight. Now, by the way, let me correct the record here. He says we ghosted him. Jimmy, we didn't ghost you. We responded literally as soon as we could. Uh -oh. We were recording a show, uh -oh. which is why it took over two hours for us to respond to you. But as soon as we saw your text, we responded. Okay, still kind we of a ghost. We talked for about five minutes to try to determine what the best response would be. And we decided... Just be completely honest. Be completely honest. Hey, we want to get as far away from the war as possible. Um, you know, we hope you understand. And honestly, we're so naive, we thought there was a chance you'd be like, yeah, you know, Ooh. I get it. it it's, it's gotten ugly. There's blackmail and there's hashtag me too stuff. And, you know, you guys are going for each other's intentions and you're saying you're grifters. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if some of this ended up in court. So I wouldn't, you know, I don't blame you for not wanting to get involved. But he didn't see it like that. He didn't see it like that. I have, now, yes, Depresso. It's good. It's time for an apology, though, because he's right about something here, and, and it's a very important thing, and I want to make no excuses for it whatsoever. We were flat out wrong to do it. Um, we should have told him the day before, or the day before that. We should have Thank told you for the $2 him at some point leading up to boom, the boom. interview. Matty Boom Boom says, please tell me this isn't Kyle's line in the sand moment. Um, I don't think so, but I think it's about as uh, hard. I think it's about as... As far as we've seen, this is the harshest that Kyle's been to Jimmy. Jimmy, who is literally being like, oh, you're my friend? You're my friend? Why aren't you on my side? Why aren't you on my on my side? That, uh, hey, man, we don't think we can do it. We don't want to do it. We want to be as far away from this as possible. And also, I just don't want to ask you a question that I know you think is unfair, but I think is perfectly fair. So um, we should have done that, and we didn't do that. And there is honestly, no blackmail. The blackmail no claim. The blackmail claim is complete bullshit. The blackmail claim is total bullshit. It is a complete mischaracterization of what actually happened. For it, um, I will tell you what we were thinking. Again, this isn't an excuse. This isn't a rationalization. This is just what was going on in our minds at the time. Uh, honestly, we were afraid of the argument that would come ah. when we didn't. When we told you. Okay. Hey, we don't want to have you on. We don't want to have Jank or Anna either, but, like, we don't want to have you on. We were very afraid, hey, it's possible when we say this, that he might get really angry and view us as, like, the enemy. And, you know... Why is it a mischaracterization? I can ex I've explained this already once, but I'll explain it again. Saying, uh, stop harassing me because I remember how you treated me when we worked together, that is not a- that is not blackmail. That is a firm statement. I don't want to be harassed by you or your followers anymore. You did this bad thing to me, and I haven't forgotten it. That is not blackmail. I don't think that that... I really do not think that that fits the, the definition of blackmail. Especially because it was sent in private. Now, if, if Anna Kasparian had made some big tweet storm about it, or a video or whatever, that, that, would, be, that would be something else. But that's not blackmail. Come on, that's ridiculous. It's ridiculous to claim that that's blackmail. That's outrageous. Oh, that, that's kind of what happened. He, he took that as a slight, and he viewed it as, you know, now we're the enemy. And we were trying to... Every step... It sounds like a possible threat. I mean, you could interpret it that way. But also keep in mind that this is in the context of Jimmy constantly bringing up Anna. And Anna does not bring up Jimmy. There has been, uh, we have found no evidence of Anna ever bringing up, like bringing up Jimmy Dore on her show. It doesn't happen. But Jimmy brings up Anna. Black, yes, blackmail implies making a demand. The only demand was please stop harassing me. I don't think it could be considered a threat is a standard for blackmail. I think it's a, like... I don't know if somebody says if somebody's punching you in the face and you say 
Listen, I have a strong arm too. Stop hitting me. Is that blackmail? I don't think that's blackmail. By the way, and this was part of the problem too, is that I'm a non-confrontational guy. I don't want confrontation. Anna does bring up Jimmy, but she says people on the left. Well, I think that that, but that doesn't count as bringing up Jimmy then. Come on. Ever on the personal level, right? Like I scream on this show and whatnot, but it's all in the abstract. It's all political. But on the personal level, like every step of the way, I wanted to figure out how to de-escalate and make it so that, you know, nobody's mad at me. Like I wanted to salvage my friendship with Jimmy while also being completely- Holly Hooms brings up a great point. Holly Hooms from Twitch chat says, she doesn't even claim to have any private information that would be damaging. Dor told on himself about the sexual harassment and he was proud of it. That is not blackmail. That isn't blackmail. I'm sorry, that's not blackmail. Be honest with how I felt about the situation. And so I figured the best way to do that is just to stay out and not have anybody on the show. Because if I don't have Jimmy on the show, I don't have to ask him about, hey, didn't you go overboard a little bit with your language when you were swatting aside the allegations? Didn't you slut shame? So I figured, hey man, I can keep my integrity because I'm not lying. I'm just not talking about the issue. I can keep my integrity and I can keep my friendship with him if, you know, he doesn't come on the show. Well, unfortunately, he didn't, you know, think that we had a good reason for not wanting him on. He got very angry. Let's continue. So I sent them a text back and here it is, but I'll read it to you. I said, I'm stunned by this. You are trying to draw a ridiculous false equivalency that ultimately takes the sides of a blackmailing and smearing of me and a McCarthyite smear of Aaron. The way I talked about Anna's dress amounted to me saying nice news skirt. I told this joke at a time when Anna and Jenk were doing segments such as mocking Britney Spears' old cooch in their effort to become the Howard Stern Show. This, ha this is a complete non -sequitur. And the way I responded to Anna's embarrassment at my joke was to apologize and send her a Okay, first of all, you doing a sexual harassment has nothing to do with whether somebody else also did a bad thing. That is just, that's not how it works. Sorry. Card. Immediately, without a pressure campaign or threat of a blackmail, as a friend would do. You are somehow trying to draw an equivalency between that incident seven years ago and what Anna and Jenk are doing now. Let me be as clear as I can be. I'm not at all drawing an equivalency. There's a difference between a false equivalence and just saying, hey, I want nothing to do with this. Because if I'm being completely honest about my opinions, I'm 85 or 90% with Jimmy and Aaron on this, and I'm 10 or 15% with the Young Turks. That's my honest opinion about it. Now, I can break it down and, and give the... Bruce Wayne incapacitated says, the entire point of sending him the message privately over a minor incident that was resolved seven years ago was to shut him up for criticizing their horrible political takes. That seems like blackmail. From what I've seen, you're closer to Jimmy politically than TYT, so this criticism is confusing. Um, I don't think I'm particularly close to either Jimmy or TYT, but it wouldn't matter if I was. My, criti my criticisms here are salient. My criticisms on this have been that Jimmy self-reported, boasting about his sexual harassment. He's clearly not truly apologetic. In fact, he literally joked about it being kind of a stupid... Uh, uh, he, he On his show, he actually joked about saying that he should have just been like... Um, that he should have just made the apology a joke in the first place also secondly um the sending she, she did she didn't send a message over a minor incident that was resolved seven years ago first of all it wasn't adequately resolved obviously and secondly she was trying to tell him to stop bringing her up which is a fine thing to ask somebody to do if you're constantly being brought up by somebody who isn't returning the favor that is a one-way uh totally totally messy bullshit i get it if J if jimmy is gonna um say things about like her political takes or whatever or critique the takes but that's pretty clearly not what happens that w what was happening and if you look at the comments his community obviously doesn't seem to be that way either the comments on jimmy Dore's video we watched these on stream we went over these on stream tons of them were were very personal attacks at anna kasparian uh, every little specific as to how I calculate I'm 85 or 90 percent with Jimmy or 10 or 15 percent with TYT on this but suffice to say there's a giant difference between saying I think there's 50 percent blame here and 50 percent blame here uh and just saying hey I just don't want to be involved in this can you please understand why I wouldn't want to be involved in this 
So, there is no equivalence. I don't think there's any equivalence in this fight. I'm very much more on one side of this. But I don't want to have anything to do with it because it is ugly and it is personal, even though they would claim it's not ugly or personal. Again, I don't know how they make that claim, but... I mean, I don't think Anna Kasparian... Anna Kasparian hasn't said, uh, to my knowledge, hasn't said anything about this not being ugly or personal. To my knowledge, Anna Kasparian, and to Kyle's own admission, Anna Kasparian hasn't done anything to try and get Kyle involved. Only Jimmy has. They do try to make that claim. Uh, so, yeah, it's a very repetitive video, then, I will agree. A few other points here which I think are important. He brings up how it's a McCarthyite smear campaign. Totally agree. Totally agree. And Jimmy, you know that I because don't. in my previous I don't agree. That's not watched, what my conclusion is. I say I don't that's think correct. So. <laughs> you guys are being McCarthy smeared, for sure. If Crowder told you to stop talking about his political takes, it would be right and you would do that. I don't think so. If Crowder and I had worked together for eight years and afterwards I continued to send my fans after him making personal attacks um, and, and whatnot... Um, then I think that if he responded by saying, I'll tell you, and, and, I, and I had sexually harassed him in the past, I think that would be fair. What the hell are you talking about? Like, what the fuck? Okay, your, 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 your parasocial connection to Jimmy Dore is getting in, your, in the way of your ability to actually appreciate this video. And you're kind of proving my point with all of this. That Jimmy's fans literally cannot recognize that what he did was wrong here and that there's no reasonable way. So, again, it's weird because I feel like I'll say something, they agree to it, and then they'll bring it up again later as, like, a strike against me as if I'm feeding into X, Y, or Z. But I'm not because I'm on the record <laughs> on all those things and I don't agree with the McCarthy smears. And I don't agree with the smearing of Aaron. I don't agree with the threats they did to you. So on and so forth. But he actually ends up the threats. in that little... Now it's become... Notice, notice now that Kyle is saying the threats. Even if we were to grant... Even if we were to grant that there was a threat that was made, it would be one. But now Kyle is... Oh, the threats, the threats. You see how these fudging keeps happening. The fudging keeps happening. The fudging of the truth just keeps happening over and over and over again in this we've got we've we've got three whole videos analyzing these things going another reason why i didn't want to get involved because so you know tyt to one extent or another was basically arguing jimmy Dore's a misogynist right that's one of the arguments that they're making and um so jimmy's response I'm going to respond one more time, and then I need to take a break from responding to you because I feel like you are, you are lost in, in – you're a Dorite. You're, you, you are displaying yourself as a Dorite. Bruce Wayne Incapacitated says, TYT criticize people all the time, and their fans actively harass people via the TYT army. It seems like they want to spray all over the place, but TYT doesn't want to get sprayed. Okay, hold on. Let me, let me explain a couple things here. Let me explain a couple of things. Public figures critique other public figures all the time. There is a big difference between public figures critiquing one another and one of those public figures regularly bringing somebody up and those fans going personally after one of the members of that show. These are very different things. Okay? I recognize that there may be fault in other circumstances uh, that, that is about TYT. I have a fuckload of critiques of TYT. I have a lot of critiques about TYT. But you would be a fool to say, after looking at any of the comments on any video about this, that there are not a large number of Jimmy Dore fans regularly and personally going after Anna Kasparian. Specifically, often, with a very weird misogynist and, and sexual air to it. And all of this was done not because of any aggression on, on Anna's part, but because Anna said, please stop sending your fans after me all the time. Because I remember the sexual harassment you did to me. And I know that this is not like, that this is not some like even playing field. Come on. 
Aaron and others was to say, oh, this is total this is total hypocrisy because look at these old clips where they're talking about, you know, the pussies of various celebrities. Yeah, and remember, and remember again, one more time, remember again, Jimmy Dore is the one who's been leaking DMs. Jimmy Dore. He didn't have to do anything except for just stop flagging harassment. Yeah, my food's probably cold, but I'll eat it later. I want to do this segment. But they didn't stop there. If they stopped there, fair enough. That's a decent point, right? They didn't stop there. They went that next step and said, look, they're such hypocrites. And also, they're the real misogynists. Well, now you lost me. Because in the same way, Jimmy, that I actually defend the initial incident here, where I say, no, I think your interpretation is probably correct. That you made a joke, and now it's just being weaponized against you years later. So, what, you can't make a joke? So I don't think that's misogyny. I also don't think those old segments are misogyny. In fact, I... Okay, this is going to be controversial to say, but that's back when I loved TYT. When TYT, what, you know, had the, the news hour, and then they had the Howard Stern hour, I wouldn't miss a fucking episode. I thought it was the best thing in the world. Listen, I'm in favor of jokes, and I'm in favor of fucking around, because I'm a big fan of political incorrectness. We know. And I do see this we know. hypocrisy of, like... We know. People want to give themselves a pass for the political incorrectness, but then, like, label their opponents terrible things when they do the political incorrectness. And I don't like that game. That's a gutter game, and that's another reason why I didn't want to get involved, because I didn't want to have to break all this down and give all of my more nuanced opinions on it. Let's continue. So, now Kyle went on to do a segment with Cenk Uger's nephew instead of me. <laughs> that's Dude, what the fuck does that have to do with anything? Wait. What the fuck does Hassan have to do with anything? First of all, Hassan and Jenk had a huge falling out. What are you fucking talking about, Jimmy? What does this have to do with anything? This is a non sequitur, again. Again, he's just making a blur that vaguely feels bad to, to his viewers. His viewers have been prompted to go, Oh, what? Is that nepotism? What are you talking about? Hassan is... Literally his own person who had a huge falling out with TYT. What the fuck are you talking about? That is hardly staying out of it. And he let then and it and the subject of course came up. And here's how they covered it. They just stay out of like all the fucking uh Jimmy Dore drama or whatever the fuck's going on at any given moment like people will always come in and they're like dude what do you think about this i'm like no no yeah i not. feel the same way i feel the same way yeah shut the fuck up like i, I look i would much Patagon rather there. yeah <laughs> I, I would much rather talk about you know um like literally using a pocket pussy than than that <laughs> which i do i talk about a variety of different things i just don't think that like they, uh, uh, it's just hum it's just hilarious that they're all la oh, good thing he didn't say nice nice news anyway so okay. they they're la they're laughing off they're they're framing it as Jimmy Dore drama which is unbelievably disingenuous and a disservice to what's happening and it's a dishonest framing by news people who should know better and they do know better because I already told them. Because they're doing that. I already sent them that text. They already know this. Everything I wrote in that text, Kyle knows this. Actually, that's what we were recording when you texted us, and it was after that episode that uh, we responded to you, and then you responded to us. But put that aside. That's neither here nor there. There's a bunch of things I have to say in response to this. See, this is where everything really changes. Because, again, early on, they were very fair. They were like, hey, you know, Kyle's right on force the vote. He helped us a lot. He was eloquent. I think he, basically they argue, yeah, he's a good faith actor. And then now here, they're really reading into this clip a lot of stuff that's just not there. So he seems to believe that it's, it's like a slight or a pot shot at him that we spoke to Jenk's nephew. But if you follow anything about Hassan Piker... He's no longer just Jenk's nephew. In fact, he very openly disagrees with Jenk on a zillion things. Yeah, uh, just, again, Hassan is literally the biggest political streamer in the world right now.
Like the idea that they're like just they're just doing some sort of nepotism thing is so stupid. That's so stupid. Hassan Piker literally dunked on Jenk for the same dumb tweet about sky gods with Israel Palestine as Aaron Mate did. He's his own man, and he's one of the top Twitch streamers in the world. To have on Jenk's nephew, Hassan Piker, is to have on Hassan Piker. It's got nothing to do with Jenk, which gets to the point of what was said in that clip. Hassan says, when people ask me about the Jimmy Dore drama, I say, no, not even going to comment on it. Hold on. He said he's not even going to comment on it, and then I respond, quote, I feel the same way. That's all I say in the clip. And Crystal says, we're, we're all simpatico there. We make the point, we don't want to get involved in it, and you interpret that as tacit endorsement of the Young Turks and the smears against Aaron and you and the threat that was made against you? No, 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 no. Let me be clear. Let me be on the record as much as anybody could be on the record. I think you and Aaron were smeared. Um, I think they threatened you. Nah. You had every no, right Pisatis to defend John. yourself. They've not broken I any rules. I think you went a little too far in your defense. Sorry. Uh, by effectively slut-shaming Anna. But you guys are right on the policies. You have every reason to be upset. All that stuff is true, and it's also true that everything we said in this clip stands on its own two legs. Namely, the point I was making was, I don't want to get in the middle of this because I don't want to get in the middle of it. In other words, I wanted to avoid the exact same fucking thing I'm doing right now. I don't have to do this segment. I don't want to have to talk about this. Okay, we I know, we know, we know. This a thousand yes. different ways to we know, we know, we know. All I wanted we know. to do, we know. Aaron and Jimmy, we know. was to be out of this. That's it. All I wanted to do was to not interject myself. But now I feel like, you know, my hand was forced, and so I have to comment on it, and... S Satter M says, I'm getting whiplash from agreeing slash disagreeing with Kyle. Look, on one hand, I do understand where Kyle is coming from. When you when there's somebody who is a as aggressively obnoxious as Jimmy Dore, who tries to get everyone on his side and constantly is, is doing a sort of with me or against me mentality, that is a very awkward position to be in if that person is your friend. It makes life very difficult. Those types of people tend to either uh, make lackeys. They either tend to surround themselves with yes men. Well, I mean, it's obvious in their mentality, right? You're either with me or against me. They want yes men around them. Um, and that is an awkward place to be in if you're friends with somebody like that. Friends over this. I know not only it's not just Jimmy and Aaron that hate me now. Also, of course, the people at the Young Turks would hate me now, because why wouldn't they? I'm saying I 90% disagree with them on the shit that's going on, so what do you expect is going to happen? Thanks, so Lava Monster. he's Appreciate reading that. so much into this clip, and that... This is the nuclear thing I was talking about earlier, that at times, whenever I say stuff they agree with, there's an underlying charitability that they have for me, but then when I say stuff like this, which is actually relatively benign, they read malintent into it, as if it was a shot at Jimmy, when it wasn't a shot at Jimmy. And it wasn't some sort of tacit Somebody endorsement Fill of the shit in. that TYT was Somebody doing. Somebody fell knife It was literally in. exactly what it says at face value there. Sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. Sometimes, hey, I want to stay out means I just want to stay out. All right, let's continue. That clip, so that clip right there, when I saw that, that to me opens up. Uh, uh, with that clip, I think that they invited themselves up to criticism. People are wondering why we're talking about this now. That's right. That clip right there was basically belittling, I think. That, that's yes. why I took it. The concerns that we have because yes. it's one thing if you want to decide look i don't want to comment on an issue you don't have to comment on an issue no, no one's going to force you i personally was disappointed that people like them stayed silent if they had been smeared like that i i think i can confidently say that i would have spoken up uh because it's i don't think that kind of smearing should be tolerated but whatever you you, like, you can't demand that someone speak out speak uh speak up for you okay but to Jimmy say, did though. They just say, Jimmy you know did what? do that. We don't want to talk about this. Period. But then they don't just say that. Then they try to justify it by doing two things. One is they draw, as you as you told them, this false equivalency between a joke you made seven years hey, ago. Hey, Kabibble, great to see you. And you, you. apologize. Thank for. you. And what they did, which is start, which is smearing me and then trying to blackmail you with this with this ridiculous sexual harassment claim. Okay. So there's no equivalency between that. And that's why, as you said, it's not a war. It's a smear campaign. And then going publicly and actually commenting on it by basically belittling the whole thing and dismissing it as Jimmy Dore drama. It's not Jimmy Dore drama. It's us pushing back against the smear campaign, which we have the right to do. And if you're going to belittle us for doing that, you're basically taking the side of the smear campaign. What? I See? 
It there we go. There we go. There it is again. With us or against us. Again. Again. It baffles me that they could watch that clip and think, that's me saying I'm basically taking the side of the smear campaign. That's what did I say? Exactly what I said there, which is... They're I just, just doing it. They're, be they're, they're, I just want to get They're out so of this. obvious. It's so shameless. I, that's all it is. I mean, they're reading so much into that when none of it was actually said. So, I mean... Let's go through it. They keep bringing up false equivalents, false equivalents, false equivalents. I, I don't know how I could be any more clear. I'm 85 or 90 percent with Aaron and Jimmy on the actual issues here. I'm with them on Russia and Syria and force. We know, the vote. we um, know, with them Kyle. The God, we know, Kyle. We know you're on them. You've literally said that probably 25 times this video, dude. Okay, this is something that's been that's actually like stressing me out. Like, the like Kyle is literally prostrating himself in front of Jimmy Dore's fans right now. This is the most apologetic disagreement I've ever seen in my entire life. It's like shocking to see. Yeah, reassuring an abuser. Yeah, I know. It's ridiculous. That Aaron was smeared. They Thank you, Kabib. We'll deeply Jimmy, appreciate that. that Thank was you totally so much. Unfair. He had every right to swat aside those allegations. All that is true. Literally the only point of disagreement. The only yeah, point of disagreement Yeah, I don't like it either, but that's... Is personal i think when jimmy was swatting aside those allegations he went too far and he slut shamed dana and talking about how she dressed inappropriately and everybody could see her ass and all that stuff i think that went too far that's really my only disagreement with you guys and guess what i wanted to keep it to myself but you kept insisting i got involved and so now here i am getting involved you know and I, I don't know how else to say it because I was crystal clear there. I just didn't want to be involved or say anything. And then it's like you guys kept insisting I got involved. Then I told you what I really thought and my 90% disagreement wasn't enough. It needed to be 100% agreement or you do an hour long segment where you come after me. It just honestly it really is amazing. It's like Thank watch, you for the tier one like sub. The I'll answer zone. that when I can. Because they keep saying that I Here, believe things or I'm saying things that Thanks. I'm not saying and I don't believe. And I don't know how else to rebut it other than to keep reiterating, I don't believe the things you're saying I believe. I don't... They say the clip was belittling, belittling the concerns you have. No, it wasn't. The clip was saying, look, I just don't want to get involved in this. I just don't want to get in the middle of it because it's really ugly and it's really personal. Anything that's substantive policy-wise, I'm always going to comment on it. But in terms of throwing myself in the middle of the fucking hashtag me too stuff and the blackmail stuff and this and that, that was the last thing I ever wanted. The last thing I wanted. Why do I want to get in the middle of that when anybody's involved, never mind three people who I know myself. So, uh, oh. you know, they said they don't want to comment on an issue. Well, you don't have to if you don't want to. But wait, I, that's what I said in the clip is I don't want to comment on the issue. And I was acting like I don't have to. So yes, I'm going to say I don't want to comment on it. Yeah, Lanoira brings up a great thing. Again, we're going to restate these things a million times. Uh, Lanoira from site chat says, keep in mind, things didn't even happen the way that Dor claimed. She didn't flash her thong at him. Obviously, we know that was fucking that was fucking fabrication on his part. He just loudly commented on how sexy her legs were in a skirt while her students were there. Yep. Yep. I was I was proceeded to be dragged into this debate. We'll get to more on that in a little bit. Um, and one more thing, Aaron says there, I would have spoken up if they were smeared like that. We already established that he didn't. But again, I don't hold that against him. He didn't do anything wrong. You don't owe me anything, Aaron. You're not entitled. Uh, or, excuse me, I'm not entitled to your defense on anything. Whether it's my old tweets, whether it's Crystal's thing where Nathan J. Robinson argued she's enabled or emboldens Nazis. We're not entitled to anything, man. And it's okay. It's okay. And, by the way, I get Russiagated and McCarthy smeared all the time. I debated Jenk on Russiagate. Everybody knows that. Louis, Louis Mensch or Louis Mensch came after me. And I didn't see many people respond at all. At least no prominent lefties. So, but it's okay. I'm not saying that as a gotcha. I'm just saying that... So that please just extend the same charitability to me that I Yes, we went over Anna's retelling of the events. It's on the first video. I do to you. Okay? The charitability. Just watch the I first video. Is, It'll be up before this video just, goes like, in live. League with all of my enemies de facto or default. I, I don't do that. And you shouldn't do that either because I how many times do I have to go through it? I agree with you guys on almost all the policies. Anyway, continue. Uh uh, also, to to, 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 to to go ahead and talk about it and misframe it like that, and to do it with Jenk's nephew, is you're not pressing pause, you're not staying out of it. It's the almost the exact opposite. Yeah. So yeah. you didn't get dragged into this. Kyle Kalinske inserted himself into this. Kyle 
did that uh, on purpose and didn't have to, but he did. And that's obvious. So that's why the next day on Twitter, uh, people were saying, hey, Kyle, why don't you cover the story and the thing? And I like to tweet. And that's what set him off to do this video. He says that last part is important. He says, oh, the next day on Twitter, I said, somebody said, why don't you cover the, the that and the thing? And I liked it. And that's what set him off. So that's why the next day on Twitter, uh, people were saying, hey, Kyle, why don't you cover the story and the thing? And I like to tweet. And that's what set him off to do this video. Okay, Jimmy, you know the specifics of that. The specifics of, of that are, I'll throw it up on the screen now, the tweet he liked said... Oh my god, here we go again. Crystal We're getting Kyle, into the likes again. Seriously, though, you're ignoring the serious story completely to avoid drama? Weak. The reason that set me off, Jimmy, is because I didn't ignore the serious story at all. In fact, I covered Biden bombing Syria the day before, okay? I covered that as the we first are going story the day point. before. And then the OPCW leaks I've brought up numerous times, and I brought it up in a fucking live stream in my very last live stream. So let me show that. So we're the rebels in Syria doing... So we are we've the rebels this in Syria okay, doing already. Okay, we've seen this already. We're going to skip ahead. We've already seen this clip. We've literally already seen this clip. Okay, I think that we've gotten basically everything we need to out of this. Like, is there anything more we can even get from this? Like, he's just repeating himself over and over and over again. Okay. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see here. And that's, by the way, my only criticism of you here. But, you know, it's, uh... We're gonna jump ahead here a little bit. like that's absurd. And it's not absurd. So, if Kyle's gonna clutch his pearls <laughs> and somehow try to validate whatever garbage he's trying to validate that I said she dressed inappropriately... <gasps> Please don't say inappropriate! Oh my god, that, you know how that stings! What the hell's wrong with you? Get a hold. Okay, remember, this is a tweet from 2013. This is a tweet from 2013. A a side joke that that says if Chank Uger masturbates live on the Young Turks, viewers dropped to 12. But if Anna Kasparian does it, viewers go to 6,000. Now, I would say this is a cringe ass joke. But come on. And also, Anna engages with it. Anna says, this is highly offensive, Kyle. Only 6,000? You want to know what it sounds like? It sounds like Kyle and Anna have a better relationship than Anna and Jimmy Dore. Jimmy, just because someone else has a relationship that is okay with doing jokes doesn't mean you do. That's called consent, my dude. It's fucking consent. That's how consent does it. What are you fucking talking about? Jimmy Dore is such an yourself. idiot. So, uh, if you're going to do Sorry, that, I'm, I'm going to have Jesus to show this Christ. tweet of you interacting with Anna. And he tweeted out, if Cenk Uger masturbate, masturbates live okay, on the I Young don't Turks, care. viewers drop We just read this. Lives. We just read this. He burned me. But there's a problem. I defended him for his old joke. Go back to the first segment and listen to what I say. I say, hey, the original incident... What do you want me to tell you? I don't think he's a sex pest. I don't think he's a criminal. I don't think this is a Me Too thing. I tend to, you know, lean in his direction with how he describes the events. He made a joke, and, you know, maybe it crossed the line, maybe it didn't, but hey. Dude, that's, that's, not not just, that's not just a joke. Holy shit. Okay. All right, I've seen enough. I've seen enough of this. Kyle Kalinske, look, Kyle, I get it, okay? I think that, I think you're a really nice person. I think that's what Kyle is. I think Kyle is a real nice guy. But dude, you are taking a beating on the head from Jimmy. Jimmy is literally bullying you, and you're bending over backwards. You're bending over backwards to defend his shitty-ass behavior because it seems like you're afraid of his audience. And to me, that says a lot about this situation. If you're having to be so meek and so kind to one of the people involved in this, who's the fucking harasser? We know the answer. We all know the answer because we're sitting from the outside and we're analyzing it. But Kyle, oh my God, you are getting cucked right now. And I kind of feel bad. I mean, because I think that, I think Kyle is like a really nice dude. And he seems to be, I don't know. I've had a lot of disagreements with some of Kyle's takes in the past. I've said, I've thought I did a review of his like woke criticism which i thought totally missed the mark but i don't think kyle's like some kind of bad person but holy shit 
This comes across as beyond cucked. Jimmy openly admitted to sexually harassing Anna Kasparian. That's not just a joke, dude. It's like these... I, I, I don't know. This just speaks a lot... This speaks a lot to the way that our culture looks at sexual harassment and understands consent. Our our society really does not understand consent. This is what the, this is exactly the sort of thing that we're talking about when people talk about uh, rape culture. By the way, yeah, this is this is like this is like a a a picture perfect demonstration of rape culture where. Everyone bends over backwards to defend people who are really going out of their way to be fucking nasty, slimy, gross, sexual sex pests. And I think that making jokes about people's bodies in front of their students with the goal of humiliating them and then gleefully reporting how you humiliated them and everybody clapped for you, that is just, it's so gross. Okay, I've seen enough of this video from Kyle. I really have. I, I don't think I, I don't think I need to hear him repeat that he didn't want to be involved. We get it. You didn't want to be involved. But there's another thing that I was told to watch that I came across that I think would be very, very interesting. And so I've got it here. Let's see here. Let's just take a look. So this is the one. Hold on. Let me bring it up real quick. This is an interesting little bit. Okay. So... On the 4th of July, here we go. On the 4th of July, Primo Radical, a, a uh, apparently a political um, YouTube streamer um, or YouTube viewer uh, or YouTube content creator who seems to get a decent amount of views, had Jimmy Dore on for an interview. And this is a pretty long interview. We're not going to watch the whole thing. I just wanted to show you this was published on July 4th, 2021. This is an interview with Jimmy Dore. We're going to watch a specific clip of this and we're going to react to it, okay? So let's take a look. Here we go. He didn't want to have you on us because he didn't want to ask you a question. Um, so I'm just going to ask you the question that he didn't want to ask you. When you were revealing the blackmail attempt by Anna Kasparian, uh, you used the- Note, Notice this host? Notice this host is giving in to Jimmy's version of the narrative to begin with. Oh, the blackmail attempt. Already giving in to Jimmy's version of it. Now let's see what happens. The term that she was dressing inappropriately. In retrospect, do you think that that was the wrong terminology to use in that response? The only reason I had to talk about that was because she was fucking blackmailing me. And you're gonna you're you're gonna nitpick the words that someone who's being in, in the the most sleaziest thing you could do, the thing you could never defend yourself from. You're gonna do. She's gonna weaponize an incident from seven years ago. That's an obvious transparent bullshit. She's gonna misuse the hashtags, me do thing that makes other women not be fucking believed. And the problem Kyle had was that I said she dressed inappropriately. She didn't misuse the hashtag, dude. You self-reported. She never used the ha hashtag. And keep in mind, he's losing it on a host. Once again, the host bent over backwards to appease him, and he's still freaking out. When I had to explain what happened, I'm sorry. I don't fucking apologize for that. And what he did was bullshit. And it should... Hmm. That, that, the, but what a bullshit thing. I'm not responding to a fucking sleazy blackmail thing properly. I'm not using the proper words. Is that really the accusation? Yes, that was the accusation. And of course, I showed Kyle Kalinske to be a complete full fucking outrage pearl clutcher. Oh, look at this. Once again, mama calls it again. You are with me or against me, Jimmy Dore. That video. That fawning video, that video of Kyle bending over backwards to appease Jimmy Dore gets resulted in Jimmy Dore freaking the fuck out and calling Kyle a pearl-clutching loser. Kyle, please, look, I think that you're a nice person. I genuinely believe this. I've seen a lot of your content. I don't, I don't agree with you on a lot of things, but I do genuinely believe that you're a nice person. Jimmy is cucking you. Jimmy is fucking cucking you. Please, for the love of God, realize that Jimmy is cucking you. Stop being afraid of this shitty audience. Jimmy is... People people letting this go and just bending over to people like this is what lets them perpetuate in a space. 
Holy shit. Again, like, I have I think I've been pretty fair to Kyle in all of this. I think I've been super, super fair to Kyle in all of this. I, I said that I understood where he was coming from. I think that he should have taken a more firm position, and I really wish that he would have been willing to not downplay what Jimmy Dore admitted and does not apologize for. I, 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 I genuinely, again, I genuinely believe I think Kyle is a nice person. I disagree with a lot of his takes. Like, I mean, I've been pretty fervent in my disagreement with his takes, but he's bending over backwards here only to get insulted further by Jimmy. Jimmy is so blatantly got this us versus them with me or against me mentality. And it's on full display here. Full display. A night night. Do you think Jimmy Dore actually acts like this sincerely? Or is he just milking this for content and doesn't have any principles? I... Okay, if if I was to give my my sort of uh, armchair psychologist read, I think Jimmy Dore is an unbelievably angry and arrogant individual. I think he lashes out all the time. He has public meltdowns um, to the on, on random people. I'm not just talking about internet ranting. I'm not even talking about an Alex Jones. Like Alex Jones rants at something. Jimmy Dore freaks out at random people. Have you seen the clips of Jimmy Dore freaking out at people at AOC and at at his coworkers over the force the vote? shit jimmy Dore seems like he's got serious anger issues and the arrogance is unbelievable the us versus them the 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 uh the with me or against me mentality is just it's blinding it's so obvious let's continue though because he had tweeted at anna kasperian before hey why don't you masturbate on camera i bet you'd get more lives lied lied that is not what kyle even tweeted jimmy is lying about kyle here Jimmy is lying about Kyle here again. A fucking gun. He's lying, just blatantly lying about what was said. And this was in 2013. Oh my God. After Kyle bent over backwards to let Jimmy walk all over him like a doormat. Ha, a doormat. Get it? Doormat. <laughs> this is what fucking Jimmy Dore has to say viewers and Anna Kasperian went back I bet we'd get 6,000 so they're all fucking pigs they're all fucking pigs and they're trying to slime, slime me and it's not working yeah, Jimmy Dore I didn't fucking talk about it the right way I'm getting fucking smeared and in the sleaziest way possible and I said inappropriate oh my god Jimmy Dore said inappropriate did he say this is unhinged I'm gonna he don't, you don't want to punch Jake Hewer in the face for smearing Julian Assange while he's being tortured. You don't want to punch Annika Spring in the face for tweeting out a fucking doctored video to smear an award-winning anti-war journalist. Dude. Dude, what the fuck? Okay. Some serious grandpa rage going on here. Holy fuck. You don't want to fucking punch Jank Huger in the face for calling Jimmy Dore a neo-Nazi. You don't want to punch Anna Kasparian in the face. Twice? For doing a dude, he did it twice? He did it fucking twice? Oh, dude. Obvious, blatant misuse of the hashtag Me Too. You don't want to, do no, but Jimmy Dore said inappropriate when he had to defend himself against a fucking sleazy smear. That reveals Kyle for who he is. You admitted it. It's not a smear, you idiot. You openly admitted it. You you fucking self-reported. You did. There's no smear. What are you talking about? This channel is on Primo Radical. Is the name of the channel. And it was released yesterday. This interview was released yesterday. Yesterday. You have Jimmy Dore talking about how he wants to punch Anna Kasparian in the face. Dude, what the fuck? This is so unhinged. Just so unhinged. Holy moly. Hold on, I wanna show you this. Look at these comments. Love Jimmy Dore. I'm glad he's solid and doesn't take shit. How did you get so friggin' lovable? Jeesh, Jimmy's a sweetheart too. So underrated, the kindness. 
punch Jake Huber in the face for smearing Julian Assange while he's being tortured. You don't want to punch Annika Spring in the face for tweeting out a fucking doctored video to smear an award. You're in the face for smearing Julian Assange while he's being tortured. You don't want to punch Annika Spring in the face for tweeting out a fucking torture. You don't want to punch Annika Spring in the face for tweeting out a. You don't want to punch it. so underrated, such kindness. Right on, Jimmy. I'm with the Joe Hill left, too. We forget the message of the pre-Humphrey anti-war left at our peril. I like that Jimmy's willing to show the receipts on his shows. He lies. He lied here. Jimmy is absolutely fearless. Nothing like the sound of nuclear door on Independence Day puts the fireworks to shame. Jimmy the Spine Door is a great human being. Jimmy is the best firebrand. Can't get enough of Jimmy Door. You go, Jimmy. Holy shit. I think that this is the nuclear Jimmy that Kyle was trying to avoid. Yeah, dude. Damn, Kyle messed up. He broke Jimmy's heart and now Jimmy won't ever trust him again. 110 upvotes. Holy shit. I agree with Jimmy 100%. Jimmy's Godfather references. He says Kyle doesn't have a wartime consigliere. Oh my God. Oh my God. Dude. Holy shit. All right. Okay. And now it's the time that you've all been waiting for. Now it's time for the Drama Mama conclusion. You all love it when we come to our conclusions here. Okay? We've reviewed all of the things. We've watched everybody's responses. We've seen the reactions. We've seen everything. Jimmy is totally unhinged. Unbelie not, not even like, like unprofessional to a degree that can't even be... That the word unprofessional doesn't even describe it. Jimmy is an embarrassment. This is embarrassing. Going on a, a small podcast and talking about how you want to punch Anna Kasparian and 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 Jank Uger in the face is so ridiculous. This guy has lost all all he's lost all semblance of 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 the illusion of professionality or or anything. What an what an and. And over a smear, he was the one who put it public. He was the one who did all this. He started all of this. And Kyle has just been doormatting the entire time. Kyle, holy shit, dude. This guy is bad for you. This guy is not your friend. Stop calling him your friend, please. It hurts. I don't even know you, and it hurts to watch. It hurts. Primo Radical's latest thumbnail says Jimmy Dore goes nuclear on Coward Kalinsky. Wow. Hmm. Jimmy Dore is like such an unbelievably toxic individual. And I don't know how anybody can watch this and not come away with that conclusion. It makes me worry. It makes me wonder what type of people like Jimmy Dore. Holy shit. Well, yeah, we saw his audience are like, are like drones. They flood in there like, wow, Jimmy, you are so kind, so kind, as the dude is literally bugging his eyes out. You know what he looks like? You know, he, you know, Jim, you know, who Jimmy Dore looks like when he's on a fucking tear. Is that not just Jimmy Dore? That's Jimmy Dore. This is what Jimmy Dore looks like right now. This is what he fucking looks like and sounds like. Hold on. Can we put like a side by side? Hold on. I feel like I could put a side by side. You know what? Let's do it. Let's just do it just for the fucking fun. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Am I fucking wrong? Who is in the wrong here? Did Anna blackmail Jimmy? Did Jimmy harass and slut shame Anna? Jimmy is obviously in the wrong here. I'm sorry. My my takeaway from all of this, having done three drama mama dives on all of this nonsense, on this protracted, messy, massive drama. Anna is is 
J Jimmy is so in the wrong here. It's unbelievable. Jimmy is so out of line. And I think that this should be like a giant warning sign for everyone. I'll do a whole summary real quick. I'm going to give you a, a quick full summation of what I'm talking about here. Okay. In the first chapter, we know it is, it is ridiculous to claim that Anna was blackmailing Jimmy. That is not accurate. I don't think that's an accurate interpretation of the events. Worst you could say is that there was a threat that she would go public with something he did to her in the past if he didn't let up. That is the worst that you could possibly say. That was done in private. Jimmy then the next day chose to dump all of their DMs and then also tell the entire event unprompted. Anna did not talk about it publicly. He did. He did. He did. So that's the first chapter. Jimmy Dore is an unapologetic sexual harasser who laughed about it on his show, who attempted to humiliate and uh, and uh, and push himself onto Anna Kasparian yet again. Then, in chapter two of this whole drama, Kyle Kalinske, Jimmy Dore started aggressing on Ch on Kyle Kalinske because Kyle Kalinske wouldn't talk openly in the way that Jimmy wanted. I'm dead serious. Jimmy was calling Kyle and implying Kyle was a coward because Kyle wouldn't denounce Anna Kasparian. And then Kyle did a video in which he did denounce Anna Kasparian and barely denounced J Jimmy Dore. And then Jimmy Dore has a meltdown, multiple meltdowns in response to Kyle Kalinske. Kyle Kalinske was, we watched the video here on stream, Kyle Kalinske was so apologetic, it was actually too, it was actually annoying. He was bending over backwards to be gentle with Jimmy's ego. And Jimmy still had the meltdown that you see on your screen right now in which he, and I quote, says, how can you not want to punch Anna Kasparian in the face? And that brings us to where we are right now. The conclusion is Jimmy Dore is a, a mess, an aggressive, abusive, harassing mess who seems to get his get his kicks by just attacking other people on the left and causing shit and making their lives bad. This is the type of person you should not associate with. This is the type of person that I would never do business with. I would never make content ever with somebody who acted like that. That is the that is the the worst person that you can possibly fucking imagine. Oh, he has another one? Do we have another clip here? He didn't want to ask you. Oh, here we go. The only reason I had to talk about this was because she was blackmailing me. You brought this up in December of 2020, completely unprompted. Here we go. <laughs> I forgot about this it's clip. It's an honor to meet a war criminal who's killed a half a million children. It's an honor. I'm a journalist. <laughs> I... <laughs> um, okay. One time I was in a news studio, and I won't say who did this. Here we go. But someone wore <laughs> such a short... <laughs> no. Anyway. You gave me a dirty look last week when I mentioned that. I thought it was funny. Hmm. I I'm just saying. I've seen, I've seen newscasters naked asses in... Uh, in newsrooms. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying who's. <laughs> I think, I think it was a nice news skirt. Yeah, a nice news <laughs> skirt. <laughs> Dude, this was in I, December yeah. of 2020. He's joking about it. And by the way, this is the type of stuff that Anna was talking about. When Anna messaged him in private, he's, he's literally, he's, he's doing it. This is a perfect, this is even more evidence. This right now is, holy shit, this is right here, exactly what we're talking about. Jimmy Dore keeps bringing up a clearly very bad memory of sexual harassment against Anna Kasparian. And he's joking and laughing about it. And look, Jimmy Dore hasn't worked in a lot of newsrooms. People know who he's referring to here. Obviously. The only thing worse than a nice news skirt is a nice news thong. A news thong. 
<laughs> He's so it's self-satisfying. <laughs> fake, fake laughter. This is so painful. I'm doing the news in my news song. <laughs> this is so cringe. Oh, boy. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's pretty much that. That is pretty much the nail in the nail in the coffin. That is the nail in this drama's coffin right there. That right here, this verifies, this verifies exactly why Anna Kasparian DM'd him in the first place. Because he's bringing this up. Disgusting. Abs just disgusting behavior. This is like, this is fucking disgusting. Like this, this, this makes me feel disgusted.